Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to continue our coverage of Super Bowl 55. What's going on, Jim? I'm all good, Greg. I'm pretty excited for this weekend. Should be a lot of fun to watch this game play out. You know, it's obviously two exciting offenses, neither defense necessarily dominant, so should be a fun game, should feature a lot of points, and I'm pumped to get things going. How are you? I'm hanging in there getting ready for this weekend, and I'm ready to start talking about my DFS lineup. So let's begin with the top stud on the board, and it's obviously going to be one of the quarterbacks, right? They're the most expensive player, and rightfully so. But which quarterback do you go with? For you, the answer is Patrick Mahomes. He's priced at $16,500. Why Mahomes over Brady? Yeah, I think that if you're playing things straight up, Mahomes is going to be the go-to guy for your MVP slot, getting that 1.5x multiplier, just because he has multiple paths to a big game. He doesn't need to go nuts as a passer to be the highest scoring player for the entire game. He does have a little bit of rushing juice. Now, that toe injury is definitely still there. That's definitely still a thing, but he said that he's fully healthy. He's had two additional weeks to rest up. I would expect more rushing out of Patrick Mahomes this week than we saw in the conference championship, and that's not something we see out of Brady unless it's a one-yard, short-yardage touchdown, which could happen for sure because he does uh, that quarterback sneak so well, but more likely Mahomes will be the guy who has more paths to a big game via his rushing than what Brady has. I also think this Chiefs team is just more likely to pass the ball than the than the Buccaneers are. You go back to their Week 12 matchup, the Chiefs threw the ball 84% of the time in early downs in the first half for that game. They came out and said, okay, Tampa Bay's going to stop the run. We don't care. We're just going to air it out and beat you that way. And they did. They did so very effectively. Even when the Bucs decided to you know, try to double Tyreek Hill, they were still pretty effective. So I'd expect the Chiefs to throw the ball a lot. I'd expect Patrick Mahomes to run more than Tom Brady, and I'd expect the Chiefs to put up some points. That's why I prefer Mahomes over Tom Brady. I will say, though, Greg, there is some wiggle room here. If you want to get different at MVP, I do think that both Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill at least are enticing just because they should be less popular there than Patrick Mahomes. So I don't think you have to use Mahomes at MVP in every lineup by any means, but I do think that if you're playing things straight up and just trying to pick the guy who will be the highest score for the game, that guy is most likely going to be Mahomes. If I've got one pick at MVP for this game, I will go Patrick Mahomes. But again, there is some wiggle room to go elsewhere if you want to. If you want to be contrarian, you can go with Tyreek Hill. You can go with Travis Kelsey as your MVP. I think those are, are, are certainly warranted, and Tyreek Hill has that upside to be the perfect MVP. So if you're making one lineup and you're playing it safe, the highest scorer of the game, I agree with Jim, is going to be Patrick Mahomes. As we get into that middle tier here, Jim, there's a whole lot of Buccaneers we probably should talk about. And that brings us to Chris Godwin. Why is he the right Bucks wide receiver in this middle tier? It just seems like he has a better matchup with the Chiefs because you look at the wide receivers who have done the most damage against the Chiefs so far this year, it's mostly been fast guys and guys who operate from the slot. And Chris Godwin is both of those things. He is a fast guy. He is a slot wide receiver. And I think that bodes well for him in this specific matchup. He had nine targets first time these two teams faced each other. He had uh, a team leading nine targets last week or two weeks ago in the conference championship. Two of those were deep as well. And the one game without Antonio Brown, even in the games where Antonio Brown is healthy during the playoffs, Godwin became the leading receiver for this Bucks team. He had 27% of the overall targets in that time, 23% of the deep targets as well. So whether Antonio Brown plays or not, Chris Godwin's probably going to have a pretty good role in this offense, and I think he has the best matchup against this Chiefs defense. Normally, I do prefer Mike Evans between these two guys because Mike Evans more likely to get deep targets and more likely to get red zone targets as well. But here against this specific defense, I do think that Chris Godwin has a slight edge. So I would go Godwin over Evans in this middle range. I'd also mention Leonard Fournette, pretty enticing at $12,500. I would expect him to be a little bit less popular than both these guys. I'd expect he would be wary of him given that Ronald Jones is lurking, but Fournette has proven he is the lead back for this team. So I will go with Chris Godwin here as my favorite guy in this mid-range, but I would also say Fournette is at least interesting, especially in lineups where you assume the Bucks get a lead and are able to hang on to that throughout. Whether it's Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, or Leonard Fournette, in that middle tier, the Bucks are a team you're going to take advantage of. Obviously, here in the Super Bowl, they all present different values, but Godwin's matchup, as Jim said, it just looks the best. So Chris Godwin... Get him in there in your lineups here on Super Bowl Sunday. 
One final player to get to, and it's the value play, and it's the sneakiest play, I think. And you're only Cameron Great, tight end for the Bucks, who always has an opportunity to score a touchdown here for Tampa Bay. A lot of the eyes will be on Gronk, but Cameron Great may find his way into the end zone. Yeah, and Brait's actually had a really good role all throughout the playoffs. And I think that this line of thinking is similar to the Chris Godwin one because the matchup is just better for the tight ends here than it is for the outside receivers like Mike Evans. In the first match between the Chiefs and the Bucks, we saw the, the Bucks lean pretty heavily on their tight ends. Rob Gronkowski had seven targets. Cameron Brait had six. And since that Week 12 matchup, Cameron Brait's role has continued to expand. In the two games they played with Antonio Brown in the playoffs, Cameron Bray was actually third on the team in overall targets at 15%. He also had 15% of the team's deep targets, and we know we can get touchdowns as well. He's had 149 yards through three games in the playoffs, which is a pretty good number for a guy whose salary is down at $7,000. In the game they played without Antonio Brown, Bray had five targets there too, so... I think it's pretty realistic to project Cameron Brait for about five targets. If you can project that for a guy whose salary is $7,000, give me that every time. If you want to jam in Mahomes, Brady, and then either Hill or Kelsey, you got to find guys in the 7000 range. And I do think that Cameron Brait would be my number one guy down here for either team. Miko Hardman, probably my favorite guy on the Chiefs side. If there's no Sammy Watkins, Byron Pringle is in play too. He is $6,000, but... If I've got to pick just one, Cameron Brait's role is underrated. I would not expect him to be all that popular for this slate either. So I think he has a good combination to be a guy you can lean on for tournaments on Sunday. For just $7,000, you want somebody that's involved. And as Jim just described, Cameron Brait's been relatively involved, especially without Antonio Brown in the lineup. We'll see about Brown's availability on Super Bowl Sunday. But at just $7,000, with those targets, with a chance at a touchdown, Cameron Brait. Belongs in your lineup, along with Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, we appreciate the time. Good luck on Sunday. I appreciate it, Greg. Good luck to you as well. Enjoy the game, and we'll look, talk to you again next week. Talk about uh, the more important sporting event, the Daytona 500. We've talked about Daytona once. I am excited to do it again. Tomorrow, Tom Vecchio will join me, as I believe we're talking some NBA which will be exciting going into the weekend. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great evening, and we'll see you again tomorrow right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.